Thank you. So welcome everyone to most welcome to the Blida workshop today, Think the Unthinkable. My name is Ulrika Dommelen Matsen and I'm a member of the Eblida Executive Committee. And I represent the Swedish Library Association. I will share this workshop and I do hope that you have and will share many questions with us uh, during the session. Please feel free to write questions in the chat uh, during the presentations, and then we will also have Q&A sessions in between. So, in times of virus, environmental and other societal threats, we are happy to discuss libraries with you today. Uh, we have some excellent speakers here. And I think all of them have a teacher experience or are working as teachers. Uh, the program of today, we, in the program, we will discuss libraries as democracy hubs. Uh, Marina and Chiva will guide us through what lessons can be learned from the COVID-19 crisis. And then Alicia Selot Carol will tell us more about sustainable development goals and libraries. And then our EBLIDA director, Giuseppe Vitello, will tell us about European structural funds and how this can connect to libraries and sustainable development goals. But first of all, <laughs> we will have an introduction by our president of EBLIDA, Ton van Klimmerin. He is the director of the Public Library of Utrecht in the Netherlands, and he has also expertise on, for example, library innovation. Very welcome, Ton. Well, thank you, uh, uh, Ulrika. And uh, well, um, I think I must share my screen now. It's done, okay. Um, well, Welcome also on my behalf to everyone. It's um, great that you are here and it's also special time. So I hope that you and your families and also your colleagues in the library are well and not affected by, uh, by COVID. Uh, I'm happy you are here. Um, and um, I think that um, libraries in uh, Europe have uh, shown great creativity and flexibility in uh, the COVID crisis um, um, by uh, inventing all kinds of services. Um, I think it's a great passion of librarians to uh, deliver uh, services and to want to deliver services to their community. And I think all libraries in Europe deserve a great compliment for this flexibility. And we had an early report by Eblida on how libraries deal with COVID. And that is how we perceive our role as uh, Eblida, uh, as a platform of exchange of experiences for libraries in, uh, in Europe. Uh, we also saw that libraries were reopening uh, one by one in different countries, in different stages to uh, the new normal, you could say. And book circulations, uh, circulation was the first to start up again. And I think in, in most cases, it's running quite well and um, that uh, we don't see that numbers are a bit lower, that there are less visitors and less patrons uh, using this service. Um, the distancing of one or two meters uh, is, is an issue in libraries uh, with seating in study spaces and in our reading rooms. So we can have less people there. We had to take out a lot of seats in our libraries. And we are also limited in our program and activities and lectures. And that is really something that is a pity because in these times, there are so many questions that libraries could address 
uh, and uh, support the conversation in the community about these, uh, uh, these issues. For example, um, you could want to discuss the role of uh, the state, which is reinvented, you could say, in these times. The people who feel threatened in their freedom and in their privacy. What is that? Um, also discuss uh, our healthcare systems and the medical ethics of those patients who are priority and who are not. So there's a lot of issues we would have liked to address, but debate is uh, difficult in, in these days. The crisis is not over yet. Um, we see the, uh, the, the numbers going up in almost all countries and new measures by governments are pending. Um, at the same time, the flu season, it's autumn in Europe, the flu season is on its way and people sometimes get a cold. So more and more staff is now at home with complaints, waiting to be tested and waiting for test results. So the capacity to have our libraries opened is, uh, well, is at risk. And we might um, uh, have to close down libraries because lack of staff. Um, so libraries need to depend on their continuity plans and uh, well we will see what happens in the weeks to come and of course we will keep you informed on what is happening in different countries um, the way we in, inform you is um, that we uh, had have our newsletter we have had special editions of our newsletter and that is a way to communicate but now we have this meeting and i'm glad that so many people attend this meeting um, so we can uh, not only inform you but also discuss our plans and our activities and be aligned with our membership on what we are uh, doing and the topics we discuss today are very uh, important and valuable so it's good that we are not only communicating them but also that we have the possibility to share ideas and questions. Um, as a Blida, we had to change our way of working as well. And one of the things we had to decide was to cancel our annual meeting, um, our annual council that was supposed to take place in June. Um, well, uh, we finally had to decide to skip this as an in-person meeting, but we will now have it uh, online uh, October 28th, and I hope uh, as many as possible of you will attend. Um, this is one of three meetings we have uh, this week, three online workshops. And... Um, at these meetings, we discuss what is on the agenda today, uh, but um, it's also a kind of preparation, you could say, for the annual council, uh, because uh, everyone should know what we are working on, and also everyone should, uh, if everyone is informed, we need less time during the annual council to discuss that, because I think that would be a challenge with many people attending to have this discussion. So better split it up in um, small parts. Um, and you can see that uh, the uh, um, executive committee is also working online. Uh, well, the advantage now is uh, that we meet almost every month in, uh, instead of uh, every three months. And I think uh, an advantage of these online meetings is also that people who are not in a position to travel or don't have the means to come to, to physical meetings, they can attend on, uh, online. Um, before I turn to the program topics of today, um, I would like to remind you that this is not the only thing we are working on. Um, for example, Eblida has a long history in copyright and library legislation, and that is also something we continue working on that. Ulrika has informed us about the program of today. 
but let me start by um, the title of this meeting. Um, that is Think the Unthinkable. And librarians, we, we have to take uh, uh, ourselves beyond the uh, limits we usually have in our thinking. We have to think outside the box and find new solutions for a different uh, time. So think the unthinkable. Say to ourselves, what if uh, this would be possible? Uh, and the best way to predict the future is to uh, create it. So we should not ask, at least not only ask, what the future might bring, but we also should create it ourselves by imagining what we want to do and then go for it. After all, we are librarians. We are passionate. We have a mission to accomplish in our society. I earlier uh, measure, uh, mentioned that libraries were and are still creative in dealing with the COVID crisis. And I think we must stay that way um, uh, when this crisis one day might be over. Um, so we have to think of what we like to keep from what has changed due to the crisis. We must ad adjust ourselves to the new situation, but keep on working on a better informed and a democratic society based on competent and well-informed citizens. And now we might have new means to work for that. So let's hope that within a year or so, the crisis in its actual size and impact will be gone. But we must now prepare for an agenda, how we continue afterwards. And our colleague Marina will dig deeper into that. Inevitably, part of that agenda will be the Sustainable Development Goals. They are so connected to the core values of the libraries, like equal opportunities for all, no discrimination of any kind, lifelong learning, just to mention a few of these goals. I strongly believe that this is the core business for libraries. And some people might be afraid that the library will become an activist. But we have our values like libraries welcoming all people, people of every walk. We also have the value that the library provides as a trusted beacon, true information that is fact checked and that is important in these days. And that is, by the way, the reason why Eblida is very happy to cooperate with NewsGuard. And I strongly believe that libraries should provide versatile, pluriform information. But I don't believe in libraries as being neutral. Whatever we do, we always take a stand. If we have opening hours only during daytime, we know we exclude those who are working then, and by doing that, we take a stand. Or if we do or do not inform our uh, customers or deliver programs on the Black Lives Matters movement, we also take a stand. Whatever we do, we take a stand. So it's not about the library becoming uh, a political agent, uh, but it's the library in providing information, empowering citizens. That is what we do. And I think we are not only allowed to work on the SDGs to accomplish our mission as a library, but we are obliged to do so. And Alicia will take us further there. Then, of course, there is the matter of the money. Who is going to pay for it? Um, the economy of all countries in Europe is affected by the COVID crisis, and it differs between uh, different countries. To some, it means a decrease of 8% of the economy. Other countries are at 13% or even more. So librarians uh, fear that in the years ahead, there might be a new period of budget cuts. And of course, 
we now need to think and show what value the library produces in our society. So politicians wouldn't even think about cutting the budget of libraries. But having said that, we also need to find new ways to fund our activities. And in Eblida, we made an inventory of the possibilities of tapping some money from the European structural funds. And Giuseppe will explain all the possibilities to you later in this workshop. So for now, I like to thank you all for attending. I wish, wish all of us a very fruitful meeting. And please do not forget to ask your questions in the chat. They will be addressed later on. And I will see you again at the end of the meeting. So thank you for your attending. Thank you very much for that introduction, Tom. And now we will hear Marina and Sheva, uh, who will discuss a European library agenda for the post-COVID age. And Marina, she is a member of the uh, EBLIDA EC, and she is representing Bulgarian Library Association. And she is also a teacher at the University of Library Studies and Information Technologies. Welcome, Marina. Thank you very much, Ulrike. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for me, it's a great pleasure to be with you uh, at the first uh, EBLIDA workshop dedicated uh, to topics of importance to all libraries today. So, uh, with the current presentation, I will focus on the report, a European Library Agenda for the Post-COVID-19 Age, published by Blida in May 2020. This report clarified possible outcomes of the COVID-19 crisis and provided for the solutions which were received from and are offered to Blida members and European libraries as a whole. This report comes together with an analysis of the risks and challenges and a set of recommendations which should be considered the EBLIDA agenda for European libraries in the post-COVID age. Between March and May 2020, libraries all over Europe were locked down in different modalities. All of them provided minimal library services, Normally, during crisis, the library is an information center and a safe haven for citizens. In this crisis, however, the library cannot act as a gathering point for sharing stories, answering questions, and be a hub in the community. In order to monitor the state of libraries during the COVID-19 crisis, Ebliva created a checklist for library associations and libraries in the face of COVID-19 crisis and initiated a survey which involved 17 European countries. The main objective was to find a common strategy in the face of COVID-19 and also to detect the legacy left by library policies and trends during COVID-19 and to keep separate library activities based on contingent factors from library activities and trends that will become permanent in the post-COVID-19 age. The post-COVID-19 library agenda is not a standalone program, but complements the experience matured by libraries in implementing the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. The engagement of European libraries in this broader framework is the mirror in which libraries can prove how structurally essential they are for the social and economic development of a country in the post-COVID-19 age. Hence, the link with the European Structural and Investment Funds. Eblida has identified five new normals for a library, for a European library agenda in the post COVID 19 age, which are as follows exponential social distancing, a well connected two meter library. Technologies are mutating and shaping libraries in new ways. 
uncharted economic territory reviewed the library budget composition, library governments at central and local, local levels. And the last one, do not forget the climate change opportunity and threat. In the forthcoming slides, I will describe the possible activities to be given priority during the post-COVID phase together with a set of recommendations. According to a Bleeder report, the new normal in library practices concerns success policies, personnel security, social distancing and sanitation of collections. Rules and regulations have been and will be driven by three factors national health regulations, risk perception, which varies from one country to another, and the size and the arrangement of library spaces. A bleeder has diffused recommendations and guidelines for handling physical material in libraries enacted in several European libraries and countries. These recommendations are in line as far as basic points are concerned, for instance, the 72 hours isolation for books after they are returned. Also, worth a mention is the fact that library spaces and offices are being redesigned in order to reduce the risk of creating crowds. In the longer term, in order to avoid touching handles and pressing buttons, all doors in libraries may open automatically and you might tell the elevator which floor you would like to go. Social distancing and the two-meter society may have a strong impact on the concept of a complete self-service or unstaffed library and on the responsibility of, of a facility being used by patrons without direct human surveillance. Since library services could not be performed on site, a home delivery service was often activated with book packages to be picked up at the door. Library services were fine-tuned to meet customers' needs under extreme circumstances. With a view to combating fake news on COVID-19 and to providing a one-stop access to information, the most common service in European libraries has been the creation of platforms ensuring centralized access to COVID-19-related health information. Social media was used to offer story time in Germany, Netherlands, Norway, Spain, through Facebook groups and YouTube profiles, or also for library exchange and reuse of digital products, Bulgaria. More advanced services concerned elderly people in lockdown who were reached by telephone calls and storytelling. Librarians were engaged in all kinds of different roles and tasks. Automatic door opening, voice commands in elevators, homeworking, telelibraries, and online help desks will very likely be the new normals for libraries. Searching library catalogs will be done by voice command. The effect of social distancing can be offset by a transformative and adaptive library able to fill social differences and bridge digital gaps. In some European libraries, activity were even further integrated into national health policies. In Lithuania and to a lesser extent, France and Portugal, libraries helped produce 3D printed face masks for healthcare workers. In other countries like Ireland, libraries were so tightly integrated into national health policies during the COVID-19 crisis that the equipment was donated to hospitals Online lectures and interactive workshops were provided in collaboration with mental health services. These initiatives can be considered the historical legacy of the COVID-19 crisis for future library emergencies. They show library resilience and uh, their ability to promptly meet an acute demand for empathy expressed by their communities in case of need. During the COVID-19 crisis, we all saw how technologies are mutating and shaping libraries in new ways. Libraries uh, promoted access to online resources via their websites, pointing, 
to platforms of e-books and e-media. The use of platforms has increased, is increased exponentially during the COVID-19 crisis. All kinds of digital initiatives have experienced a boost. In order to overcome the contingent nature of the shift in demand for digital resources, a critical factor is the quality of the relationship between publishers and li libraries and how prices for digital publications will level off in spite of the library's increasing demand. Another key determinant of the spectacular increase in access to digital platforms has been distance learning in schools and universities. What are the lessons to be learned from the COVID-19 crisis? What does it mean for a library to be closed? If libraries are community hubs, the first lesson to be learned is that this library function is easily lost if the communities they refer to are not circulating. The second lesson to be learned from the COVID-19 crisis, resorting to digital platforms in order to enhance library services, has to be inflected in relation to short and long-term visions. If in the short term the digital channel has magnified library resilience in a calamitous time, in the long term it's not taken for granted that public libraries will continue performing the role they have been able to play so far. The third lesson learned is that libraries should be able to decouple connectivity and technology. Libraries need to monitor the movements taking place in their functional domains and exert full control on the data produced within their space and concerning their operations. The fourth lesson learned is that libraries should maintain their focus on sustainable development goals and research and development in spite of possible financial cuts generated from the contraction of national GDPs. During the COVID-19 crisis, the most effective and impressive action has been developed towards the elderly and vulnerable in lockdown. COVID-19 support service consisting of community calls delivered via phone, text, email, and through platforms, the provision of face masks, masks for healthcare workers through 3D printers, etc. All these services showed library empathy towards the communities they referred to. And this is the fifth and most important lesson to be learned in the inception of the post-COVID age. During the COVID-19 crisis, practically all European libraries and library associations provided health information services. Most of them developed a wide range of social activities aimed at vulnerable people. In spite of social distancing and requirements limiting people's access to library premises, advanced or new direct services to users were engineered, described in the current table. In the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, a European library agenda should progress around three main axes. A social axe, aimed to strengthen library links with the communities they refer to, a technological axe with an enriched offer of digital services and a seamless ability to reach a broader range of users, and a governance axe with new models and more flexibility in adaptive library structures to diversified sources of income. In regard to the social acts, a European library agenda should be related to the following activities. Activities in the health information field should be preserved and reinforced in locally uh, distributed health policies with services provided through voice and making, complementing visual-based services. Social distancing and red, red, red Thinking library spaces should bring about new ways of redesigning the flow of people, matching them with movements of resources, ideas, and equipment. During the COVID-19 crisis, libraries very often offered a one-stop access to accurate COVID-19-related health information. This is a further demonstration that 
combating fake news should be at the center stage of library mission. A society pivoting around social distancing may end up creating negative requirements leading to social exclusion. European libraries should embark upon a fully fledged strategy aimed to the vulnerable, the elderly and left behind and adopt uh, hybrid methods to reinforce their action. With regard to the technological acts, the European Library agenda should reinforce its focus on e-copies and use data and experiences matured up during the COVID-19 crisis to design new models of e-copy distribution in libraries, reinforce digital literacy activities for targeted categories of people in close link with general policies aimed to fill the digital divide, be active partners in national digitalization and artificial intelligence plans through cutting edged experiences, which may scale up library practices from the analog to the digital and from the digital to the analog. Pursue distance learning objectives in alliance with educational establishment, stretching out as far as possible the virtual dimensions. Exert control over data and metadata affecting library operations and reuse them for policy making and decision making processes. Be active actors in the distribution cycle of the post production events, likely to be built around music, performing arts, and live performances. With regard to the Library Governance Act, the European Library Agenda should request local governments to fight additional budget for library services at national and European level in order to compensate for shortcomings in libraries' future budgets. I think of themselves as structurally essential to the development of a country and in this way manage possible financial resources generated from the European structural and investment funds link the development of the public library to sustainable development activities at local and national level, encourage libraries to be champions of sustainable development policies in all their actions and apply the taxonomy regulation on social development by the European Commission in all library operation, adopt flexible forms of library governments in order to manage European structural and investment funds in an appropriate way. The consolidation of digital trends in libraries in the post-COVID-19 age can be seen in two complementary frames of reference, a strictly cultural perspective and a broader societal vision. In a broader sense and much closer to the implementation of the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development, a society pivoting around social distancing may end up creating negative requirements leading to social exclusion. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted a new digital divide between the have and the have-nots, furthering technological inclusion, digital literacy, non-formal and informal learning. It's a big challenge for libraries, which have to revise the scale the scope, the learning objectives, and the virtual dimension of their operations to make this happen. The implementation of high-tech and artificial intelligence tools in libraries may be a strong incentive to remodulate the European library agenda towards sustainable development. A critical factor for libraries aimed to shape technologies is also the control of the data produced within the library ecosphere. Thank you very much for your attention. So thank you very much, Marina. And uh, are there any questions from the audience? <laughs> Please write in the chat. I will read the questions.
you can i mean you can also give examples from your own countries what has happened during covid-19 has there been any innovations or digital solutions in your country that you want to tell us about uh, any home delivery or remote access to media Sorry, can I use uh, can I use the power <laughs> to be able to speak uh, just to uh, uh, may to ask an open question to all participants because I recognized I I see that some of them uh, contributed to the elaboration of this report uh, with their uh, uh, when we when we sent the question when we sent out the questionnaire for instance okay. uh, a question I would like to ask. Uh, to the participants, and I remember that we are in, in fact, we are in, like in a conference. So, uh, although it's uh, not the, exactly the same, um, a question I would like to ask the participants is: uh, You, there were so many new services that started during uh, the COVID crisis. Now we are living a hybrid phase. What, how many of these, serv which services were replicated also in a? normal or in a hybrid phase and which services actually were not replicated i'm i'm just giving a few examples because i recognize some names in the in the list of attendees there was an excellent example really very probably unique in europe of an agreement between uh, uh, libraries and uh, the national library and uh, the, uh, the 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 author association concerning the opening up of the digital library that was in Latvia. As this agreement, is this agreement still valid? Then, of course, there is also this opening of the digital library. The use of digital library boosted everywhere in Europe. Uh, is this trend, has this trend consolidated or uh, there was a decline? And I know, I mean, in Italy, in, uh, in France, everywhere in Europe, there was this uh, boost. Also, there was this use of uh, face masks, uh, the production of face masks through 3D printers. I mean, that was really incredible. Uh, that was really to think the unthinkable. And uh, uh, is, as a service like this uh, uh, being replicated? And also another example is, uh, of course, uh, libraries as hubs for accurate information about the COVID crisis. Is this information still on? So, I mean, these are the open questions. And uh, uh, I remember we are uh, uh, in a workshop. So, unfortunately, I think you can only write uh, the answers. But uh, uh, I hope that uh, this will help us also to think ahead and uh, to see what, what will be the future direction. Thank you. Uh, perhaps uh, Marina, if you if you back to the some of the slides, is it possible? Oh, yes. a question. Yes, of course. Yes, a question. So, did anyone re recognize the examples that uh, Giuseppe gave us? I want to say something about them. No. Then let's move on. Oh, here's a question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Uh, does the crisis give libraries the opportunity to change? Anyone who wants to reflect on that? Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, this crisis uh, was uh, a very uh, big challenge to everybody in the society and also for the libraries. But uh, uh, the crisis uh, gave opportunity to libraries to um, to show uh, their different face, to stress on digital services, uh, to uh, find uh, a different way to get uh, close uh, to the library users in the time of lockdown. So uh, this crisis was also a chance uh, for the libraries um, and librarians to improve their digital literacy and um, to uh, provide services uh, also uh, reflecting uh, on uh, the improvement of uh, these skills uh, among the users. Thank you very much. Anyone else who want to add something? No, then we have an example from India. Uh, most of the Indian libraries started giving their full text databases access to their own users during pandemic. That's great. So if there is no other questions, we can move on to the next subject. And uh, this is um, sustainable development goals and libraries. And we will have um, Alicia Celescaro from uh, uh, Spain. She will tell us about this. And Alicia, she, she's repre re representing the Spanish Federation and of Archives, Libraries, Documentation and Museum Associations. And she works at a library tech company and she also teaches. Very welcome, Alicia. Thank you, Rika. Thank you so much for your <clears throat> introduction. I'm very happy to be to be here and to share with uh, all of you an, in my opinion, an excellent work made by Eblida Secretariat, Giuseppe, Magella and Sophie, but uh, with the key contribution of all of us. So thanks to everybody that has attended our request and answered the questionnaire sustainable Devel development goals and their implementation in European libraries. You are doing a great job. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to, to present the, the report, um, but I want to, to focus on three, three points, three main points. Uh, first of all, I'm going to, to give you an overview of uh, library projects, goal after goal. Then I want to, to, to introduce our reflection um, to, and to explore the SDGs policy in uh, pursuit in some library systems at national level. And finally, I want to approach uh, the very, very difficult work, in my opinion, of uh, SDGs indicators in libraries. As you know, you can read the full report because it is available in English in the EBLIDA website. So what I'm going to try now is to offer a global reflection about libraries and agenda 2030, not to re review the report. And uh, before starting, I am very, very pleased to announce too that FESAVID has trans translated this report into Spanish and we, together with the Ministry of Culture, are going to organize a round table to analyze our work and add to it the perspective of EBLIDA, the European approach and the examples from other European countries. And of course, I invite you and ask you to do the same in your countries. So let's start with my slides. Uh, I think it's working. Okay. Okay, first of all, a little introduction and reminder. All countries, all countries <laughs> share the responsibility to contribute 
within the limits of their capacity to the attainment of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. All of them, all of them, I repeat, <laughs> embark upon specific ways of implementation goals and targets. All of them need to design, develop and implement their own public policies towards sustainability, prosperity, social inclusion, equality and preserving our planet. The most important issue is leaving no one behind. And uh, what about Europe? So, uh, the European Union strategy for sustainable development has been running since 2001. But in November 2016, the European Union presented an initiate and sustainable development package with, which reflects the priorities set up by member countries. In 2017, a multi-stakeholder platform, including high-level experts and policymakers in sustainability issues across all EU countries, was set up to support and advise the European Commission on the implementation of the SDGs at European level. I think there are three main ideas in this, in this project. The goals are interpreted according to the European context. Eurostat has set up its own series of indicators and sustainability indicators relate, related with the national voluntary reports presented. And the, the one very, very interesting is that the, the European programs and projects have been subjected to a rethink and are readapting in order to comply with an SDGs. Some elements of sustainability have, have been introduced into the European activities. So, in this context, what about European libraries? European libraries can consolidate and boost their activities in favor of sustainable development, but in our opinion, they have to keep in mind that there is a specific European approach in terms of SDGs, interpretation, assessment and funding criteria. And the BLIDA is working very hard on it. Thanks again to the Secretariat. But I don't know if it's necessary or not, but I want to remember that all of this work, all BLIDA, BLIDA work, related with SDGs and the European approach has a very important framework for us, our strategic plan. It is available too in the EBLIDA website and presented in four brands, the political level, the legislative framework, policy makings and socio-educational impact. As I have said before, in this framework, EBLIDA sent the questionnaire Sustainable Development Goals and their Implementation Europe and European Libraries for all members and countries and their responses have helped us to affirm that among European libraries there is a clear awareness that SDGs are an extraordinary opportunity for libraries. More than two-thirds of the responses express this consideration and almost one-third think that SDGs can be can be an additional activity for libraries. Uh, libraries can contribute to the three SDGs pillars, economic, social and environmental. They can cover SDGs in a way which is consistent with the objectives set up by European Union, with ambitions to be climate neutral by 2050, as well as smarter and closer to its citizens. This is the objective of the, of the report. We want to uh, know what, is, uh, what the library, European libraries are doing and then talking about the national policy and, and the indicators. But let's start with library projects. I'm going to start a, a brief review, SDG by SDG, but first of all, I want to remark four main ideas when we are talking about SDGs projects in libraries. SDGs are not sort of accessory objectives for libraries. Working together with the library core missions, we can say that we always work 
link it with them. Sustainability in libraries and SDG projects are more than environmental projects or green libraries. And a very interesting uh, remark is that the, we can do everything at the macro level and in the micro level. So we can adapt and implement in this sectoral level. It's not only for countries. We can do it in everywhere. And the last one remark is uh, that in SDGs libraries also fit the small scale or locally based projects can get a high and deep impact and not being only of pure demonstrative nature. Everyday action aims to show that SDGs should be considered as a part of the core library missions. What are we, what are we doing and what is 2030 agenda for us in our daily life? life? It's not easy to map information about SDG-oriented projects in libraries. Some of them clearly indicate which SDGs they are trying to, to attain. Also, many projects cover more than one SDGs due to the interrelation between them. If we, are if, if we are developing courses and workshops for the special needs groups inclusion, SDG 10, probably it's easy to improve their skills in order to get a job, SDGs 4 and 8, and in order to get more basic resources and services, SDG 1. This is the interrelation between SDGs. In Spain, in my working group about libraries and 2030 agenda, we have uh, divided projects into different kinds of projects. Uh, in the one hand, we have awareness raising projects, and in the other hand, we have action projects. But in the, in the report, you can find more information about projects and examples harvested from the basis of the responsive results from the questionnaires. And also, there are a lot of interesting and concrete activities in this and stories. What I want to do today is to mention just one generic project services related to each SDGs. And my election for today is more related with the variety. I want to mention the maximum of library activities and functions in order to, drive, to draw them in a wide range from a new framework, the 2030 Agenda. Let's start with SDG 1, no property. Library activities related with SDG 1 consist majority in literacy activities. But many times it is, or they are linked with uh, distributing food or another basic goods. For the second, the SDG number 2, zero hunger, we can find rural libraries are community information centers disseminated the necessary information for farmers day-to-day -day problems in those regions. But in the urban areas, we can we can find seed banks for long states, for example. For the SDG three, good health and well-being, I want to 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 show the alliance the alliance between public libraries and health associations is perhaps the most interesting develop of the SDGs implementation or the active living area project like the citizen science experience. For the SDG4 quality education, I think probably uh, it is the, the SDG in which libraries are more comfortable, maybe because of the, of the reading. Reading is one of the necessary tools for learning and education, and it's our core business. But for me, and as you can review in the report, there are three library main activities related with education, with these SDGs. I want to highlight reading promotion, of course, digital literacy, and open access. For the SDG number five, gender equality, the I think that the principle of non-discrimination is in all declarations and all, all uh, framework of, of library work. But uh, I want to, to, to you to think that um, SDG 5 tries to 
forward, to make visible, to keep safe in this. And in this way, libraries are showcases and safe places to discover, to choose, to develop their own interests. For SDG 6, clean water and sanitation, in the European cost, uh, context, uh, we can say that all of we, we have access to basic sanitation and we are connected to the secondary the treatment. No? Differences between member states to exist and awareness activities in libraries, mainly campaigns or exhibitions, may concern clean water and its use at local level. For the uh, SDGs number seven, there's a lot of examples related with the sustainable library and the use of energy in our buildings is always present. But like in the SDG number six, <clears throat> awareness acti activities in libraries are mainly focused in, in on zero low carbon sources of energy, green energy, blue energy, for the SDG number eight, decent work and economic growth, libraries are already intensively working towards the, the attainment of SDG eight. And many times linked with the SDG four and the digital literacy for inclusion or for job opportunities. For the SDG number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, libraries should become a permanent infrastructure encouraging innovation and social context to make citizens familiar with new technologies, infrastructures, and resources for innovation. Labs, like spaces, digital literacy. For the SDG number 10, reducing inequality, I think that supporting individual development and integrating those who are socially excluded poverty lines, migrants, minorities. I think this is at the core of the library's work. One of my favorite services in library is the multicultural library. And I think it's a good example if we are talking about exclusion. SDG 11, sustainable cities and community. In many, many European cities, libraries are an essential element of contemporary and urban uh, planning. Helsinki, Paris, Aarhus. <laughs> but for my presentation, for this presentation, and because I want to, to draw a lot of, of uh, the maximum of the, of the services, if I think in sustainable cities and communities, I think we can't forget mobile services for who's living in rural areas or having mobility problems related with SDG 10, of course. And the SDG uh, 12, Responsible Consumption and Productions. I think that the library and documentation centers <clears throat> may greatly influence human behavior. I return here to the idea of a library as a showcase. Awareness raising activities and sustainable practices linked with the circular economy, proximity services and responsible consum consumption. For the Climate SDGs 13, 14, and 15. I think the, the awareness activities and campaigns promoting good practices are the common examples for related projects with these SDGs. I want to remember the idea of the, to change the, the green library, just uh, uh, thinking in their environmental impact or uh, certified by environmental management system. We want to, to pass to the sustainable library. It's like uh, adding or we have to add ecological literacy and ecological actions. For example, citizen science or research again. And finally, in this review goal per, per, by goal, I want to, to mention peace, justice, and the strong institutions, the SDGs 16. It's our SDGs because uh, we can find there the access to information as a target. Uh, 
But I think it's a, it's a very important because the, the central mission of a BLIDA strategy is to engage libraries in taking care of people and their rights by encouraging democratic participation of citizens in society. Libraries are public and significant access to information. I will, I, we have to guarantee quality, veracity. And finally, the SDG 17, Partnerships and for the goals, libraries are services used to collaborate and work together with other institutions or organizations. Libraries are in the playground. They are an identified socio-educational agent. I have to start my review with the questions, what are we doing and what is 2030 agenda for us in our daily life? If I put all these projects, services I have mentioned in a tag cloud and don't link them to the SDGs logos, you can find, of course, a library daily, daily life. I have two some Spanish projects previous to the Agenda 2030 framework. You can uh, find there uh, um, agricultural productions, uh, Tech uh, labs for uh, for girls, uh, bank seats, uh, and a special library for health, a uh, library living lab, um, a campaign for uh, uh, science, a uh, library, a mobile library, projects uh, related with the equality gender in libraries, issue reading, and multicultural, and. What is my, 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 my reflection there? That the difference or the proposal is to bring them to the forefront and make them visible on the political agenda. To do this, we need to address library services not only in the professional guidelines and recommendations, but also in action plans and development strategies. I mean, the orientation of them must depend on the local context of our core functions can support other public policies or can help leaving no one behind. When we are designing, planning or setting up our project, it will get more impact and more development if we pay attention to the implementation of local, national, European actions plan for SDGs. These reflections drive me, drive me to the other point of my speech, the second one, library policies. According with the idea of localization, we can affirm that we, we will find as many library policies implementing 2030 agenda as countries. Also, in my opinion, there are some variables that we need to talk about a real policy. I'm thinking on a professional associations and library institutions and both with committed professionals. We can learn, obviously, from the experiences in the in the countries you can you are going to to find in the in the report. But I think there are four interesting strategies uh, that would be useful for all of us just to, to apply and to create a library policies, uh, SDGs ori oriented. These ones. Uh, the first one is join force from the library institutions and associations in two ways. Firstly, towards ourselves to be stronger, to have more scope. But secondly, towards other organizations and entities working along the lines of the Agenda 2030. This is the case of, of uh, Latvia or Spain. We are working with other institutions, not only with the library sector. We are w working with all uh, the institutions and organizations working in the library agenda way. The second one is another strategy you can you can choose, but I think it uh, it will be useful for for us if you focus in some SDGs. It is possible that it will be more comfortable for you. If we can work hard, but we do it in some specific SDGs. For example, if we are comfortable working for the SDG 
4 and ADG 10, no problem. Everything counts to get the word we want. The third is the rethink library policies as an institutional engine designed to attain one SDGs. This is the Spanish case for gender equality. Gender equality has become a transversal axis on the entire strategic plan of the Council of Library Cooperation. And of course, if macro or high level is too far, try to local, regional level, for sure it will, it will impact in the national results. And finally, if you need inspiration or guide, we strongly recommend to visit the Eblida Matrix. It's a powerful tool, work in progress in some aspects, with information for each SDG. You can find there, for each SDG, information about European programs relevant for libraries related with these SDGs, best practices for, of, from libraries, and opportunities for library funding and indicators, Eurostat indicators and library indicators. Really, it's very, very, very interesting uh, tool. Please <laughs> visit the, the Eblida website and uh, review all, all the information you can find there. But I, I have a stop in indicators. And as I promise you, indicators is my last uh, topic. Uh, Really, the, the measurement of the library contribution to the, to the attainment of SDGs is uh, thorny, usual, not easily solved. Really, in my opinion, it's the, the most difficult thing <laughs> related with the library uh, contributions to the, to the agenda. The focus is mainly on quantitative uh, output number of materials, loans, uh, visits, hours of uh, opening. But not much light is to, to set on the intrinsic value of the library to its users, not the impact on his or her daily life. And a small number of studies have examined the socioeconomic impact of libraries using different methodologies with a view to evaluating both direct and indirect uh, library outcomes. As uh, an important indicator resulting for impact studies is the return of investment, ROI, normally defined as the relationship between the total economic benefit of the library and the total resources invested in the library. We have uh, examples in Denmark, Spain, Latvia, uh, United Kingdom. And uh, in Spain, we have a, a calculator provided uh, for the Navarra, the Navarra region. It is available on, online for users and for libraries. You can put your data in the, in the form and uh, it calculates the ROI for you for your library or for your as, as users. I think it's a, it's a very good tool. It's a very interesting tool, very easy to manage uh, tool. And it helps, helps uh, so much, of course. But uh, in my opinion, it's isn't enough. Library impact has an economic dimension. Totally, totally agree. But uh, library impact has other dimensions, effective, cultural, educational, social, and this, those are the dimensions of the agenda, 2030 agenda. We need this kind of studies, and uh, but this kind of studies need data, data, data. And Really, really, uh, I think it is uh, very, very important that we need to rethink and remodel our statistical systems. And I'm not only uh, talking about data or indicators. I am talking about technology, interoperability, 
tools and instruments to facilitate this evaluation because it's really complex or it be a very really complex. And I think the indicators are the the next step in the in the Blida matrix. <laughs> I'm stopping here. I don't know what's my 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 time, but I want to suggest you to take a look of the different national library systems and the implementation of sustainable development goals that you can find in the in the report. For sure, it shall be inspiring and inspiring and interesting. For sure, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Alicia. Very, very interesting. And we also got here uh, an example from Daniela Skokovic on establishing SDG book clubs for children and young adults. It's a good idea to promote all goals at libraries. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you have seen that too. Yeah. And uh, are there any more questions to Alicia? I won't uh, ask them <laughs> for, for actions. What uh, if they can share, like Daniela, their, their experiences or actions they have taken in their countries? If you want, you can share in the in the chat your experiences, your projects, your vision. What about focus on two, three specific goals? What is your opinion? I'm looking that uh, Sophie has shared all the, the links. I have I mentioned the reports and the <laughs> matrix. <laughs> Very well done, <laughs> Sophie, thank you. Yes. So if there are no questions, we will move on to the next subject. Oh, here's a question. Um, oh, two questions, good. Mm -hmm. see. <laughs> Hello all, I'm now consulting uh, the Roy calculator of the libraries from Navarra. It's very good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good story. Yes, it's very interesting. Yeah. I recommend you review it. Yeah, <laughs> good. And then perhaps all libraries can offer tap water, maybe all local authorities can do the same. Governments and libraries should also lead by example. There are apps related to tap water with geotagging. So who is involved? Oof, that's a very specific question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, but, but uh, I think this is uh, it's, uh, in, the, in the same line of my reflection about uh, showcases. We are mm. a, a window. We are a soap window. If you, we are yeah. doing uh, a responsible use from uh, water, from energy, from everybody can show. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, a good idea. <laughs> yes, thank you very much then. And then we will move on to the last subject for today, which is on European structural and investment funds. And it will be our director, Giuseppe Vitello, who will speak about this. Uh, Giuseppe has a long experience for various international organizations and also the Italian Library Association. And he's also the writer of many books and articles. Welcome, Giuseppe, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ulrika. Uh, for me, it is uh, very hard to say anything after this uh, magistral lecture that was given by Alicia. I learned a lot, including this uh, Navarra calculator. I think uh, we should uh, give a uh, wide uh, dissemination to this uh, calculator. And uh, I immediately uh, book uh, a space in the next newsletter for the Navarra if they can uh, uh, talk about that, if they can write about that, or if they can give us information, we will uh, uh, do something about that. Uh, I'm a, a little bit embarrassed because after this uh, so interesting lecture, I have to speak about money. And uh, uh, money is uh, something everybody wants to have, but nobody wants to look for. 
and uh, I am uh, uh, I will be dealing with uh, administrative documents with European structural investment funds. So I think uh, it may be boring, but however, it's necessary. So first of all, uh, let me, I'm trying to share my screen. And, uh, <clears throat> or perhaps I'm, uh, I'm uh, asking uh, Sophie if she can, uh, Launch her. Uh, uh, Sophie, uh, can you please uh, can you please uh, share actually my PowerPoint presentation? Um, so, uh, first of all, I would like uh, to say that. Uh, um, uh, this report, Think the Unthinkable, uh, has four versions. I think that uh, many of you were impressed uh, more than, were impressed perhaps by the title, but they were impressed also by the subtitle. Why? Because it was very long. And because also because it was uh, uh, something you can understand. I mean, after a, a, during a crisis or after a crisis like the COVID crisis, Libraries must have an agenda. They, this agenda may meet the sustainable development goals, but what about European Union or structural in investment funds? Uh, does it mean that a bleeder has a special access to these uh, funds? Well, unfortunately, I have to disappoint you, but the bleeder has no special access to these funds. But what we would like to do is to, um, uh, is to provide you with uh, knowledge, with know-how, with tools that can enable you to have access to these funds. And uh, as I will say, you, uh, and uh, as I will expand upon later on, these funds are, are for everybody. They are for uh, uh, regions that are lagging behind. They are for uh, well-developed regions. And anyhow, they are for everybody because we, are, we have to reconvert the whole economy towards sustainable development. So really, they are available to, uh, to everybody. Um, when you think of structural funds, oh, here they are. Uh, uh, when you think of uh, structural funds, you may think of, uh, um, of uh, hard infrastructure, you know, hard investment on uh, uh, railway corridors, on uh, motorways, on a train station. Thank you, Sophie. No, it's not this one. Uh, you may think of uh, uh, railway stations, railway corridors, highway. But uh, uh, in fact, uh, and you are true, I mean, uh, most of the time, these funds are allocated for hard infrastructure. But uh, when uh, you... Uh, when you think of um, uh, actually the thinking behind the structural funds, in the like 15 years ago, there was a kind of rethinking of the, the funds, and people started to say, well, but if we have motorway, if we have railways, then people have to use them. What is the return on investment about these uh, uh, hard infrastructure? And so they started to think that uh, beyond infrastructure, there are people. Beyond the infrastructure, there are services. And uh, in fact, these services have to uh, be used for circulation ideas and uh, circulation of people. And uh, this is uh, not an easy thing to do because uh, uh, then you have to work on uh, projects. You have to work on uh, services. And this is why there was a kind of shift in the uh, thinking of structural funds uh, and uh, also, there are now more opportunities than for libraries. The second, uh, let's say, idea that structural funds uh, uh, conjure up is the fact that uh, these funds are only for uh, regions that are lagging behind. And this is also true. I mean, uh, when in the last uh, uh, quarter of the uh, last century, there was uh, Spain, Portugal and Greece joined uh, the European Union, 
there was, uh, in fact, they used uh, massively the structural funds. But when, uh, and also, of course, it is uh, it has been the case for uh, Eastern European countries when they joined in 2004. And even now, I mean, structural funds are very much used, for instance, in Southern Italy, in Eastern European countries, in some uh, regions in Portugal, Spain, Ireland, and so on. But uh, there are uh, actually different kinds of uh, funds. Let me see whether this is uh, the right one. Yes, this is the right one. So, so, and the the the, the so, but these funds are not only for regions that are lagging behind. They are also for. Uh, what uh, in the Euro vocabulary is called smart specialization strategy. You know that uh, uh, the European Union is famous for creating very, very uh, complex statements. And, uh, and uh, in fact, this is one of them. In fact, smart specialization strategy means very simply that uh, if you have a, a region or if you have a city where there is a industrial decline or where there is a willingness actually to uh, reshuffle the whole economy economics of uh, the region then you identify some a couple of assets of these regions and then you invest massively on them on them and this is how libraries can get in i mean uh, to be in line with these uh, smart specialization strategies and this is very much what the libraries can do in, uh, within the European structural investment funds. But uh, what is a library? I mean, for us librarians, it's very easy. We think that a library is a library is a library and that there is, a, and that there is no, uh, no, no other thing uh, than uh, libraries. Uh, but for uh, uh, structural funds, I mean, if you have to think in terms of structural funds, a library has two kinds of uh, meanings. The first is uh, the social inclusive libraries, the library that provides services to citizens, lifelong learning, citizen science, research, innovation, active citizenry for a democratic and sustainable society. And the second is the digital library. So this wide offer of a cultural educational products going along a continuum, going from collection to connection. And these are exactly the two priorities that have been identified in the post-COVID libraries. These were the libraries, the two kinds of quality of libraries that emerged during the crisis. Now, when we speak about uh, uh, funds, structural funds, in fact, we are speaking of a series of funds, and there are seven. Uh, in structural funds have uh, uh, more or less uh, encompass more or less uh, all kinds of activities that uh, can be developed uh, within the framework, uh, within uh, all kind of social, economic, and uh, uh, environmental frameworks. Uh, there are only a few areas which are not included, like defense industries, you know, these kind of things. But uh, when uh, we speak about uh, uh, funds that are relevant for libraries, we speak essentially of two funds. The first is the European Regional Development Fund. It is a fund for smart growth, green economy, connectivity, social issues, and local development. And the second is the European Social Fund. It is uh, the main financial instrument uh, uh, which is uh, designed to fight unemployment. And uh, it will have a still uh, an even more importance, I mean, in the near future, because uh, Within the umbrella of European social funds, there are many funds that were included, included the, the fund for aid to the most deprived. I'm pointing out to this fund because I know that some libraries in uh, the Netherlands used this fund, and uh, one of them was the public library of Utrecht. So now, Ton, if you had to file an application again for the fund uh, for this particular fund, you wouldn't do that within uh, a European Commission framework, but you would do that into the European Social Fund Plus. I don't know whether, I think it is an advantage. Um, when, uh, yeah, and these are the five, gen five general objectives of uh, the uh, structural funds. 
These objectives are exactly the same as those of the European Commission program. It is a smarter Europe, more innovation, digitization, economic transformation. It is a greener, carbon-free Europe. It is the application, actually, the implementation of Paris Agreement. It is a more connected Europe. This is a more about strategic transport and digital network is for operators, but it is for a more social Europe. It is eventually, and I say eventually, the implementation of the European pillar of social rights. It's the very first decade in which this pillar, which has been debated for long, 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 and now is being uh, implemented. It is about a Europe closer to citizens. So it's locally led development strategies and sustainable urban development. Each of uh, these uh, ERDF and uh, European Social Fund is accompanied by specific uh, objectives. Um, so, for instance, a specific objective for uh, um, for uh, um, the first objective, which is, uh, I remember, which is uh, a smarter Europe, innovation and digitization, is uh, are these. And in particular, I would point to the second specific objective, reaping the benefits of digitization for citizens, companies and governments. This is something that the library for, libraries, for instance, could use. Then uh, what we have done, and this is really a tool that you can very easily use, is that uh, we have... Uh, a specific uh, for each specific objective of the structural funds, we have uh, um, we have associated a particular SDG, a specific SDG, and uh, we have also some flagship project. It's a simulation. Right? It's not something that uh, has, has happened in the past, but it's a simulation of how you could uh, associate a specific objective to an SDG and to one of the projects as an example that you can use in your practice, in your daily work. And uh, as you can see, the column now SDGs, it covers practically every SDG. Every SDG can be integrated and potentially funded by European structural investment funds. So now imagine that you are sitting on your desk and now you say, okay, I want to file an application within the European structural funds. Where shall I start from? I think that uh, this is also a strategy on which we are going to work. But however, I can anticipate some of uh, the developments also of the bleed action. So the very first thing that you have to look at is uh, what are the national, the regional or local authorities who are managing uh, the structural funds? And there is an excellent web page of the European Union in which these, uh, there is an atlas. You click on the country and you find all authorities in your country that are managing these, these uh, funds. And uh, just, uh, I want really to emphasize the fact that uh, these funds are for all Europe and also for neighboring countries. There are funds, for instance, for uh, uh, countries that are not part of the European Union. It's a special program which is called Interreg uh, Program. So really, all EBLIDA members could use these funds if they are working on particular strategies which are, correspond to economic or social priorities in their own countries. Then another thing you are going to see is whether there are funds that uh, these funds have already been approved in your country. And I would say uh, I already know the answer. And the answer is no, they have not yet been approved. And why? Because there is a, now a big, big discussion, as you can see, between... Uh, on the European Union budget with the, the fund sure for unemployment with the next generation EU with this huge amount of money that is being allocated. And of course, also the European structural funds are associated within this discussion. So at the moment, there has not yet been a decision. And this is a good point for you because if you have the possibility of reaching one of the managing authorities, you can say to them, Hey, listen, we have, we have projects there. We have policies there. And this policy, this library policy, is meeting a sustainable development goals. I can tell you, they would be interested. Then a uh, third question you can ask is, uh, have libraries or library systems already carried out 
structural funds project, go to the report. You will find examples, and these examples are uh, perhaps interesting or perhaps relevant for your special situation. And then also, what is the smart specialization strategy at national local level? Again, go to the report because not only you will find a better definition of smart specialization strategy or what is actually to invest in a specific field um, in a country area, in a region or at a urban level, but also you will find example on how libraries have invested on sustainable development and uh, and also within a, a, a structural funds framework. Then the next thing you are going to do in drafting, uh, you are always drafting, you know, your library project. So you say, yeah, but uh, uh, I know what is the priority for my library, but uh, how, how, what is the process of selecting uh, the SDG, which is uh, relevant for this particular action? And there I would strongly advise you to consult the Ablida matrix. Alicia has already spoken about that. We really have tried to concentrate all the information we have on uh, uh, sustainable development, on uh, the European 2030 agenda, on in this uh, uh, on this uh, sum of web pages. And uh, also, I would uh, suggest you to be aware of the European policies concerning the SDG, which is normally expressed by national voluntary reports or by regional uh, vol voluntary reports. And then, of course, you should also seek for a library entity within your country that can advise you about SDG. Normally, these are the library associations. All many library associations have opened a sort of uh, SDG shop. And they are uh, uh, in this shop, you can find uh, really information, uh, national information about policies. You have heard the case of Spain, but also Latvia, also France, uh, in Italy too in many countries, let's say. Um, so I'm sure that they will give you some uh, information. Then uh, uh, I would uh, strongly also advise you to internationalize, internationalize your project. And what does it mean? Well, to really to search, to seek for uh, advice and also consultancy, if I can say. Of course, this is free consultancy for our members. What are the structural funds experiences that are beneficial for your project? Because we have experienced now, for instance, the Navarra experience is very interesting for many, many libraries in Europe. What are the SDG, how you select the SDG? Of course, there is the report, but if you want a more direct uh, experience, uh, we can uh, perhaps provide you with uh, information about project evaluation. I'm not dealing uh, with this because... Uh, uh, Alicia has given a very, very <laughs> uh, full uh, explanation of what it means for libraries to evaluate. And also SDG compliant library budget. This is uh, going to be very, very important. I mean, uh, think of you, two years ago, had you ever thought that you were reorienting your library activity towards SDG objectives? Probably you, were, you would not. Well, I can tell you that in one year time, very, very probably, your administration will tell you, yes, now you are reorienting your library budget towards SDG and tell me how you are achieving SDG, uh, uh, the goals of uh, the Agenda 2030. So these are important developments. And for this, uh, we have created, I'm very happy to inform you that uh, we had an ELSA working group. ELSA was for European Library assessment, uh, uh, European libraries and uh, sustainability assessment. And now this uh, ELSA has become ELSIA, European Library Implementation and Assessment, uh, um, Sustainability Implementation and Assessment Expert Group. And this group is going to be chaired by Alicia Selles Caro. And there are uh, and there is already a group of experts designated by BLIDA members. Before uh, closing, actually, and this is really the last element, and sorry, I want to go back to the very first because uh, yeah. the Think the Unthinkable report is distributed in four versions. Uh, the long version is something like 80 pages. It's going to be the reference version, and uh, really, I would suggest you to use it for your uh, 
uh, when you want to, uh, for reference purposes, uh, when you want to quote it, and also when, when you want to understand better a, a, a problem, an issue linked with SDGs, with, uh, with structural funds, what is the policy after the COVID age? Uh, and I'm very happy, I, I was not a, a, a aware, but I'm very happy that the Spanish are uh, translating this uh, long document. Uh, there, are, there is a short version, and actually I've seen that uh, I think France and Italy are translating this uh, short version. And this can be uh, very much used for advocacy purposes, because if you are meeting a, a policymaker or a politician, you really do not want to, uh, you do not expect him to read 80 pages, but this uh, short version is 20, 25 pages, so it would be much more, uh, uh, much more agile. Then uh, uh, there is another version, which is a uh, summary tables, and this is, uh, I would say, the administrative version, because if you want to draft a, a, an SDG project, an SDG oriented project, library project, then you need, you need to pick up sentences, statements, you know, and uh, especially the tables at the end, they are going to be very, very useful uh, for you. And finally, you have a fourth version, and it is an infographic. And this uh, is only two pages. Uh, it was, I think, in, uh, in Marina or Alicia, in one of the Marina or Alicia slides. And you, it's very useful to use it for uh, advocacy purposes. I can tell you that uh, I think last week, yes, we were meeting uh, a city councillor and she was extremely interested in this infographic. Actually, it was the only thing she, she saw. And uh, then, of course, she was listening. But this infographic was quite striking. So we hope that uh, this uh, Think the Unthinkable, you will start uh, really not only to think, but also to make the unthinkable, to come, uh, to start to make the unthinkable true, to realize this, to implement the unthinkable in your library and library system. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Giuseppe. And uh, we have a comment from uh, about Leuven living uh, is the European capital of innovation. And this is another way of, uh, it's another good example. And uh, there's a link in this nice example to, uh, to this uh, uh, cooperation model roadmap, Leuven 2030. Uh, are there any questions for Giuseppe? Totally clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably, uh, I do not expect it's going to be clear. <laughs> because it, we, we will be very confused when you read the documents because it's full of uh, Euro vocabulary. But I think uh, that it will be useful and, I, and however, if you want to look for money, then this is really the main way. You have to read administrative documents. Okay, so if there are no, no questions, I will leave the word back to Ton for conclusions of the workshop of today. Thank you very much, Giuseppe. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ulrika, and also Giuseppe and Alicia and Marina for their presentations. And also thank you for all of you who are uh, with us, uh, because uh, as we are not native speakers, um, it's, um, I think it's, it's a, a long way in these last hour and a half. And to, um, well, I have to compliment you with your uh, patience and uh, endurance. Um, I'm not, well, I will wrap up a bit, but I'm not going to summarize all what has been said. I think that um, we have seen that uh, there are differences in uh, the way libraries deal with the COVID crisis. Marina started with the uh, uh, 72 hour uh, quarantine for library materials. Uh, well, that's in some countries it is and in others it isn't. So there is no uh, uh, one way to, to deal with this, but there is some strands that are uh, more universal in all countries. Uh, and for example, uh, the way we have to deal with um, 
the, the, the problem that we can't use our meeting function in the libraries. Uh, libraries deal with it uh, by creating digital libraries and by streaming uh, activities, etc. And Marina, uh, well, took us on uh, three main strands, the social X, the economical X, uh, sorry, the technological X and the government X, uh, where we have to work on in, uh, in the future. Um, Alicia said, um, SDGs are not an, an accessory, they are at the core of the library actions. And she gave many good examples of what libraries do to work on the SDGs. And I started earlier by giving compliments to the European libraries, to all of us, uh, by saying that we demonstrated that we are creative and flexible. And that is in these examples um, as well. And, um, well, um, both she and Giuseppe mentioned the importance of the impact measurements. Um, we we uh, cannot stress enough the importance of showing to the general public, which should all be ambassadors for the library, but also to the politicians who decide about our budgets, uh, the importance of what libraries do. And so we have to be sure that we um, can uh, demonstrate the value uh, we uh, create. Um, well, Giuseppe took us, as he mentioned himself, on, on a very complex uh, subject with a lot of abbreviations and a lot of possibilities, but with two main uh, uh, streams in funding, uh, the regional, European Regional Development Fund and the Social uh, Fund Plus. And um, I think that if you look at the lists of the, the SDGs compared to what fund is connected to that and what um, libraries have already been acting on that, you will get very uh, inspired. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the, the harvest of to, uh, today. And it also is the way we as a bleeder want to operate, to connect with you and to be a kind of platform in Europe for exchange of good examples. And of course, maybe you think, why wasn't my library mentioned? Uh, well, maybe we didn't know your good examples. So share it with us, please, so we can exchange it with, uh, with others. So for now, I like to thank you for being with us. Um, I hope that you give some reflections on this afterwards. And if you have any questions, please send them. Uh, there is a contact opportunity on our website uh, so we can um, um, uh, uh, well answer your, uh, your questions. Um, and I think the most important is, um, well, the title we had today was Think the Unthinkable. Uh, but we shouldn't stop at thinking, we should act. Because, uh, well, as it says, even if you are on the right track, you will get run over if you just keep sitting there. So we have to move, we have to do it, and we can do it. Thank you very much, um, and I hope you enjoy a very nice day today.
we are here. <clears throat> Oh yes, no. I wanted to thank you, and uh, and uh, I mean it was very interesting, and especially for uh, uh, for what you said, of course, but also for your slides because uh, these slides were very 